Hello everyone and welcome to another review video. This time we're going to be reviewing Brazil, the 1985 sci-fi film that was directed by Terry Gilliam and stars Jonathan Price, Robert De Niro, Bob Haskins, among others. This is a film that is very original, one of those films that came out in the 80s that was totally unique. So let's get right into it. The movie begins with an explosion that blows out a storefront. The next thing you see is a man in an office who has a bunch of teletype machines printing out names. The names, on the, te the names that are being printed out are Tuttle. Well, a fly begins to bother him. So he kills the fly on the ceiling and it drops into the one of the teletype machines and changes the T to a B. So on one page, it is Buttle instead of Tuttle. The next thing you see is, um, we assume is cops, but armed men breaking into an apartment. And they promptly bundle up the father, put him in a straitjacket and haul him away while giving his wife a receipt for him and taking a receipt of the receipt. <laughs> Just before the cops broke into the Buttle family apartment, the Buttle family is watching TV, and it's from this TV that you find out what's going on. There is a minister of some department being interviewed on the TV, and he, from him you find out that the bombings have been going on for 13 years, and that, in his opinion, this is all just beginner's luck. <laughs> so the film shifts to Mr. Kurtzman, who's the head of the Department of Records, and he is trying to put in uh, Buttle's name into a computer, but he keeps getting an error. So he calls for Sam Lowry, who apparently is his number one guy, to try and fix it. Sam comes and examines it and says that apparently there was a mix-up, and don't have to worry because the mix-up is another department's problem, not theirs, so they don't have to worry about it. Meanwhile, Sam's mother comes and takes him to lunch because she trying to get him promoted while they're at lunch a terrorist bombing happens in the restaurant and kills a bunch of people but they just keep right on eating you know then let something like a small bomb stop their dinner anyway sam goes home and apparently he has um a dream and he's dreaming that he's flying and kissing this beautiful girl but his dream turns into a nightmare and when he wakes up it's uh his air conditioner that has gone under fritz and now it's smoking and giving off heat. So he calls central services to send some people to fix it and they tell him, nah, they can't do that between the hours of, I think it was 10 to 9 or something like that. Anyways, in the meanwhile, Tuttle shows up because he's listening in on their conversations so he comes in with a gun and he's going to fix the air conditioner apparently he's fixing air conditioners illegally anyway while he's up there trying to fix the air conditioner the central services personnel actually show up at Lowry's apartment to try and fix the air conditioner themselves the next day Sam's boss Mr. Kurtzman is having a bit of a trouble he has a, a refund check from the Department of Information uh, Services who had overcharged Mr. Buttle and they've cut him a refund check. So he's trying to figure out which department is holding Mr. Buttle and he's unable to do so. So he calls on Sam for help. Sam quickly figures out that Mr. Buttle is dead. Apparently each department uses a different term to indicate you're dead. Anyway, they decide they're going to deposit the money into a bank, but the bank sends it back, telling them that the woman, Veronica Buttle, doesn't have a bank account. So they decide they're going to take it to her personally. So Sam goes over there. While he's there, she figures out that her husband is dead, and she takes it out on Sam. But while there, Sam sees a woman that looks just like the one in his dreams, and he becomes obsessed with her. So when he gets back to the office, he tries to find out more about that woman. 
but the information about her is classified. So when he gets home for the night, he sees his apartment in shambles and the uh, building services people are there and they are pissed off and wrecked his apartment because he turned them away the first time. So he falls asleep and has a dream. And in his dreams, he is a knight fighting against his big samurai warrior. Apparently, in his dreams, he relieves his frustrations about the, his day and how it went. Anyways, while there, his mother invites him to a party that she's given. He goes to the party. And at the party, he meets the man his mother wants to him to work for that will give him a promotion. The man whispers to him that he needs Sam's help. <laughs> and apparently, what he needs Sam to do is to help him pee. <laughs> so Sam decides to take the job that his mother got for him with a promotion. So he joins information retrieval. He gets his own office and half a desk. The other half of the desk is stuck in the office of the guy next door. And that guy is trying to pull the entire desk into his office. So Sam goes over to talk to him. He sees that the guy has a computer. So since the only reason that he took this job was to get information on the girl of his dreams, he asks this guy to look up the information for him. And the guy decides to do it. So while he's waiting for this guy to get the information, he begins to dream again. And in his dream, this time, something is holding him back from getting to the girl. So anyway, he wakes up, he goes over, he gets the information, he goes upstairs to another office where he meets a friend of his who also works with information retrieval. Only this guy tortures people to get information out of them. So the guy finds out that Sam wants information on this girl and he quickly tells Sam that the girl is running around making trouble for information retrieval because she knows that they arrested the wrong guy Buttle instead of Tuttle. But they can't let that happen because Buttle is dead. He died because they were going on information from Tuttle's file and Buttle had a heart condition. So when he leaves his friend's office, he's riding down in the elevator, he sees Jill down at the, in the lobby. So he's trying to get to her, but the elevator he's in malfunctions and takes him to the basement instead. Now, the elevator is put out of service, so he's looking for another elevator to go back up to the lobby, and he sees an elevator across the way. He runs into it, but it happens to be the deputy minister's private elevator, and the cops pull him out and begin questioning him. He, of course, is worried about Jill, so he tells... He, brushes off the cops and run away and the cops give chase he gets up to the lobby and manages to get her out of the building without them getting shot by the cops so they end up in her truck and she doesn't trust him she's trying to get rid of him so she finally gives up and takes him along with her to pick up a package she picks up the package and they head to a store when they get to the store, there's a terrorist explosion and that they get caught in. The cops come along and is treating everybody like suspects. And when they grab her, he, his mind begins to fracture. You can see his dreams begin mixing with reality. By this time, you realize that Sam is not the most stable person in the world. Anyway, he attacks a cop who he thinks is an evil samurai. The cops knock him out and take him with them. His bosses yell at him, but they set him free. Now, he gets back to his apartment, and the central services guys are in there, and they kick him out of his apartment. Then Tuttle shows up, and while the central services guys are on inside in containment suits, Tuttle helps Sam get revenge. He, cha he switches the suit's air intake with the human waste removal for the apartment and their suits begin filling up with human waste which then explodes all over the room. So he leaves and Jill show up and by this time 
he takes Jill with him, but he doesn't realize that he's been followed. He takes Jill back to his mother's place, leaves her there, goes back to the office, hacks into the computer system, and has Jill declared dead. He then goes back and meets Jill and shows her, and they begin celebrating. While they're celebrating, the cops break in. They arrest him, and as the scene goes dark, you hear gunshots indicating that they killed Jill. They take him back to information retrieval building where they put him into a chair and his friend comes and is about to torture him. At this point, Sam's mind retreats into the dream world. Tuttle breaks in and frees him. When they get out, they blow up the information retrieval building. They then go on the run. Tuttle gets wrapped up in newspapers and disappear. He is now being chased throughout the city. Jill finds him and she rescues him and they end up in a little house out in the countryside. The last scene is Sam sitting in the chair smiling and humming to himself as his mind has retreated back into dream world. The technology in this movie gives it a steampunk type feel. This movie talks about the power of bureaucracy, the power of the state, and the fragility of the human mind. It's a very good movie, and it's uh, one that I think should be watched. Anyway, thank you for watching and listening.